Flatpak is the future of application distribution on Linux. It will never replace every package on every distro, especially for the underlying system, but for graphical applications, no questions there. This is where most distros are heading towards. But it is not a perfect solution. So here is a complete guide to what Flatpak is and how you can solve a bunch of issues like theming, handling permissions, the command line use case, installing from your browser, cleaning up, all that good stuff. Good stuff like this application made by our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safings Portmaster. Portmaster is an all-in-one tool to easily take your privacy to the next level. And it's a tool I use myself on all of my Linux devices. Portmaster lets you automatically block all trackers and malware in every application you run on your computer. Not just your web browser, but everything you run. It's easy to use with defaults already in place that lets you just set it and forget it. But if you like to configure every rule and every app, you also can. Portmaster is completely free and open source and also free of charge as it's funded by users that subscribe to the SPN, a super powered VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So if you want to easily improve the privacy of your system, whatever the Linux distro you use or even on Windows, click the link in the description below and download the Portmaster for free. So let's start with a quick refresher because Flatpak is a relatively new technology. It only started in 2015. Oh. So Flatpak is a method of packaging applications for all Linux distros with one single package. Traditionally, you package an app for every version of every distro because you have to link your app to the distro's shared libraries. And this is why distributions have packaged applications for the longest time because no developer could be bothered to support every single system out there. Flatpak, just like other formats like snaps or app images, aims to have a package once, distribute everywhere approach. This means Flatpaks mostly don't use your shared libraries. They ship their own, either through a runtime, which is a form of shared library that multiple Flatpaks can use, to avoid having giant downloads for each app and wasting space, or by bundling other libraries directly within the app, so they don't depend on the version the system uses, and you don't have to worry about dependency hell or incompatibilities. This does result in a bit more space being used, but if you compare a Flatpak and its runtime with a distro package and all the libraries it needs, Generally, you'll end up with almost the same exact space. Stop fat shaming flat packs, they're just a little bit thicker. Now, Flatpak also brings better security with a sandbox that doesn't let the app access all your system when it doesn't need to, and a permission system that lets you configure what the app can or can't do. And Flatpak also uses repositories that they call remotes. The biggest one is Flathub, which hosts virtually every Flatpak ever made, but there are others, like for example, the Elementor OS Flatpak repo. Most distributions ship with Flatpak pre-installed and Flathub enabled, but on those who don't, you generally can install it very easily. So let's look at that. So most distros out there should have Flatpak pre-installed. Fedora, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, Linux Mint, most Ubuntu derivatives, they all have it. But if you run Ubuntu or an official Ubuntu flavor, if you run Debian or Arch, you might want to install it yourself. And this is pretty easy. You just look for the Flatpak package and install that. On Ubuntu or Debian, for example, in a terminal, you can run sudo apt install Flatpak. But this only gives you command line access to Flatpak. If you're a more graphical type of person, then you want to add the relevant plugins to your graphical app store. For GNOME software, the package is often called GNOME Software Plugin Flatpak. And for Discover on KDE, it's generally Plasma Discover Flatpak. Next, you'll need to add a repo to be able to install Flatpaks easily without downloading a file manually each time. The biggest one everyone should use is Flathub. It has virtually every Flatpak ever made. To add it, you can either run a command line displayed here, or you can simply head over to flathub.org, download any app you want, and open the Flatpak ref file you downloaded. As you install the app through your software store, it will also add Flathub as a repo. And that's it. And most of these steps are totally unnecessary on most distributions because they pre-install Flatpak and Flathub. The good ones do, at least. 
Now, when you open your Flatpak app, you might notice that it's not following your current theme, whether you're on GNOME or KDE. That's because there is no theming API on Linux that Flatpak apps could use. Since they run in a sandbox, they don't really know what theme you're using, and they probably don't have access to the theme's files either. But of course, it's Linux, so there's a way to force anything to do something you want. Whether you should do it or not, that's another question. So, there are a bunch of themes available on Flathub that you can find by typing Flatpak search theme. If the theme you use is in there, you can just install it from here. For example, if I want to install the Yaru theme, I can just type Flatpak install Yaru. It will offer all the variants, I just type the number for the one I want. After that, I can select that theme using GNOME Tweaks to make sure it's set as my default theme, and then to apply it to all Flatpak apps, I can run Flatpak update in a terminal. And then if I restart my Flatpak app, it will use the right theme. Not super simple, I wish there was a toggle or a button in GNOME Tweaks to do all of that automatically for you. Note that also, sometimes you might need to log out and log back in for the theme to be applied, which kinda sucks. If your theme is not available from Flathub though, you will need to tell Flatpak it needs to use your specific theme. To do this, you can either run a command or use a graphical application. The command is sudo flatpak override dash dash env equals gtk underscore theme equals the name of your theme. For the simpler, graphical way, you can install Flat Seal. It's an app we'll look into more details in a minute. You open it, you click All Applications, and in the Environment section, you can type gtk underscore theme equals the name of your theme. But that's not quite enough. We still need to tell Flatpak that it has access to the folder where your themes are stored. You can't give it access to slash user slash share slash themes. So you will have to copy your themes into the dot themes folder in your home directory. To give Flatpak access to it, you can run another command. sudo flatpak overwrite dash dash file system equals dollar home slash dot themes. Or you can use flat seal again and in the all applications tab, in the persistent section, you can add a new path, namely $home slash dot themes. This should apply your theme to all your GTK applications. Well, mostly all of them. GTK4 and Libadvita apps will still not use that theme, so we'll need to add another override for them specifically. To do so, you can open your .bash profile file in your home directory. At the end, you add this line export gtk underscore theme equals name of your theme. You can save that file and then log out and log back in for all the changes we made to be applied. All your GTK apps should now use the right theme, whether they're using Libadvita, Flatpak, none of that, or both of them. For KDE, you can install themes in the same way. They have some on Flathub, it also works with Quantum, you can just install the Quantum theme engine with Flatpak, and you can select the theme you want from the KDE settings directly. It should switch all KDE Flatpaks automatically. GTK apps on KDE will require the steps I described previously. So yeah, it's not a simple click the theme experience. It's sort of convoluted and I wish it was easier, but it is doable. And if you want to revert all these changes, you can just use flat seal to delete all the overrides you added and remove the line from your bash profile file. Now let's see how you can change permissions. Flatpak apps sort of work like apps on your phone. They have permissions to access specific things, like the webcam, microphone, Bluetooth, specific directories, and more. To manage them, you can use Flatseal on GNOME or on KDE, but KDE also has a permissions page in their settings to manage that directly. Let's look at Flatseal. It will give you an entry for each Flatpak app, plus a tab for all applications, so you can grant all your apps specific permissions. Don't do that though, it's better to set permissions on a per app basis, apart from the overrides we added for theming, of course. Now generally, permissions are correctly set here, but if you feel that an app shouldn't have access to something, you can toggle that thing off. And if you feel an app should have access to something, you can toggle it on. The biggest use case I found was to allow apps to access specific directories that they currently can't. For example, Discord out of the box only has access to your downloads, pictures, and videos folders. But if you often upload files from other directories, you might want to give it access to that, so you can actually drag and drop files to Discord from that folder. 
To do so, in Flatseal, you can just click the Discord app and then go to the File System section. And in the Other Files segment, click the little plus folder icon and select the directory you want to add to the list of stuff Discord can access. Or you can give it access to your full home directory or even the full file system, but don't do that, it kind of defeats the purpose of the Flatpak sandbox. And here I think we have one big potential improvement for Flatpaks. Ask the user if they want to grant permission as they do the action. For example, you drop a file from a folder the app doesn't have access to, instead of just failing, you could just display a pop-up saying, do you want to grant access to Discord to this specific file or folder? And you could do that permanently, temporarily, or deny. That would be much more simple. Now, installing Flatpaks is just a one-click operation from your graphical app store, but if you like to browse for apps in your web browser, you can also start an install straight from there. There's an extension for Firefox and Chromium-based browsers called Flatline. It will let you click on an install button from the Flathub website and will ask you if you want to open that link with your app store. Grant it that permission and you're done. You won't have to download a Flatpak ref file, then go double click it to open it. You can start the install immediately. And no more files to clean up afterwards, so you don't have to live the miserable life of a Windows user. But if you prefer the command line, Flatpak has a bunch of tools. They have the reputation of being relatively annoying to use, but that's not completely true anymore. So let's look at a few commands. To install an app, it's easy. You just type Flatpak, install, and the name of the app. You don't need to type the complete reference, like io.github.whatever.developer name. You just type the name of the app, and Flatpak will do its best to match it and offer choices that fit. Same goes for uninstalling. You type Flatpak remove and the name of the app, and it will offer the best match from what you have installed on your system. To update your Flatpak apps, you can just run Flatpak update. To clean up unused runtimes, you can run Flatpak uninstall dash dash unused. It will offer to remove the things that are not used by any app anymore. You can also list all installed Flatpaks with Flatpak list, or search for something to install with Flatpak search. To run an app with Flatpak using the command line, you can type Flatpak run and the name of the app. Although in this case, you do need to type the complete name of the application, which is kind of annoying. To see all the available installed apps, you can type Flatpak run, then hit tab twice, and you will get a list of the complete app names for all your installed apps. And I wish they had the shorter app name shortcut here as they do for Flatpak install, for example. I don't know why they force you to type the complete app name. They could still offer choices if multiple apps fit what you're trying to do. Now to kill an unresponsive app, you can type Flatpak kill followed by the complete name with all the com.org.io stuff. Although here as well, a double tap of the tab key will display everything that is currently running. And if your Flatpak installs are broken, runtimes are missing or apps fail to start, you can run Flatpak repair. It will remove all unused runtimes, any invalid object, and reinstall anything that's missing for your apps to run. There are plenty of other commands, but these should be your bread and butter if you want to interact with Flatpak using the terminal. So hopefully this cleared up some misconceptions about Flatpak, or it maybe just taught you a few things about this packaging format. It is, in my opinion, the best packaging format we have on Linux, and the only real shot we have at having a universal packaging format for all Linux distros. It is not perfect, no packaging format is on any operating system, but it's still pretty damn great. Just like our sponsor, Tuxedo. If your computer is due for a replacement and you plan to run Linux on it, stop buying devices that ship with Windows pre-installed. Start buying devices that ship with Linux pre-installed. Tuxedo does just that. They have laptops and desktops that ship with Linux and all the hardware inside has been picked specifically to run with Linux. And if it doesn't run perfectly, they submitted patches upstream so that everything is well supported. They have a big range of devices, from the small ultrabooks to NUX to giant desktop workstations, gaming laptops, anything in between. They have a bunch of configuration options for the internals, but also for a logo on the lid of your laptop or your keyboard layout or what you want to pre-install on the system. And all their laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, 
Click the link in the description below and buy a computer from Tuxedo. They are really, really good. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section to tell me why. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to help support it. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.